Yeah, how is everybody doing? Listen, my name is Adrian Zduncik. Very good uh, attempt at pronouncing this very difficult Polish name. I come from Poland. I'm 20, I wanted to say 28, but in fact, I've just turned 29. This is actually my birthday today. It's pretty. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that, was, that was a little bit unexpected, OK? Yeah, thank you so much. But this is a very, very good, I should say, opportunity to celebrate the, this, my, my 29th birthday by sharing some valuable tips and insights that I, as a market technician, as a technical analyst, have provided for you. And last time, last year in November, when I was speaking on blockchain economy stage, I presented a, a keynote entitled Bit Bitcoin Peak is Near. And it was early November. And the market crashed, of course. So this I am com I'm coming here to present to you guys a very, very good point. But before I go there, do we have any Batmans here? Have we, has anybody seen the latest Batman movie? Show of hands. Any Batmans here? Batman fans here? Uh, nobody likes Batman. Uh, just uh, some shy, shy hands. Okay, good. So listen, that's me. That's me in the picture. I always, in the childhood, you know, would dress up as a Batman and I would chase around, you know, kids in the in the kindergarten and then playground, basically admiring Batman. And there was a very very significant reason why I admired Batman so much. And that was consistency and discipline at catching the bad guys. And consistency and discipline are the very key words that are actually coming here in this very keynote. This directly addresses, because eventually it's supposed to be technical analysis related presentation. So how does it all connect with the world of finance? Well, it connects through the persistence for the discipline, and because those are the words that describe good traders and good investors. And it all comes with certain form of follow through, of continuing, of persisting, and this is all about the trends. And spotting trends is a very, very needed skill for a good investor, for a good analyst. But before I jump into the trends, we have to understand first what it means for a trend to be a trend, but in the language of technical analysis. And before we go there, we have to understand and answer what technical analysis is and what it is not. So this is basically an art. Technical analysis is an art. It is a form of a price study. It is merely and barely an attempt to predict some form of future trends, reversals ahead of when they happen with tools, indicators, signals. However, it is never a 100% guarantee win. It is never resistant to market manipulations. It is neither a crystal ball to predict the future. It is merely an attempt. It is also not a squiggle lines. And in the light of technical analysis, we can understand that trends are directional price movements that tend to persist. And here's a little bit of a different kind of like, you know, breakdown. We can categorize and basically put trends into many different categories, but mainly they consist of the primary trends, secondary trends, and tertiary trends. I'm not sure you see the laser pointer here, but those trends and each and every single movement of prices is a form of a fractal. It means you can have the same trends, the same patterns, the same movements across many different time zones. And these time frames, you know, be the short-term time frame, you know, medium-term time frame, or a long-term trend, they all create certain tides, certain waves to it. And we can diversify, we can really you know, distinguish primary trends, secondary trends, tertiary trends, but within an overall context of in which direction they persist. And they can persist upwards, they can persist sideways, especially when the market consolidates, and they can persist to the downside. And in fact, only 20 to 30% of the time the markets move in trend. For the rest of the time, they move sideways. And of course, there are very thorough approaches to understand trends within the context of Val theory or Elliott wave theory. You know, but it's all about the persistence in one direction in the form of higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs and low lows, be it upwards or downwards accordingly. 
And in the context of what we just discussed briefly, you know, let's put 2022 so far. And we've experienced as traders, as investors, as regular people, the bear market. In Bitcoin, it's easily seen as this massive, massive decrease that takes us somewhere low as 55, 60% drawdown off the peak. It is a massive decrease, but Bitcoin really likes to follow those kind of like decreases, retracements, uh, even reaching 80, 90, 90% to the downside from the peak. This is a serious drawdown. And historically, it does not seem we are finished per se just yet. We don't see too much of a confirmation just yet. But there is some opportunity that I'm going to uh, briefly cover in a second. We've also experienced inflation, which in many, many countries is already double digit. For the OSCD 38 country community, economic community based in Paris, uh, we are talking about very, very strong persistence and a massive surge of inflation to double digit numbers well already as we are closing 2022 soon. In the US, it's well above 8%, 8.3% as the government, uh, well, representatives that the Fed recently expected 8.3%. Uh, 8.3, however, they, it come up, came up as 8.5. Long story short, it's surging. It's not good because it all leads to massive recession. And this recession can be addressed and seen in the year-to-date performance within the recessive setup, recessive basket of securities. And I'm here talking about the energy market, which is right there on top. Again, I'm not sure you can see the very pointer, the laser. Uh, but the very, the very top curve represents the year-to-date performance of the energy market, right? So we are talking about 35% of increase in the energy prices on average. To it, the two lines, two curves below it, right below it, which are on top but below uh, energy, are the defensive stocks, are utilities, consumer staples. Those are, this is a typical setup for a bear market. When those tend to perform, those tend to perform, lead the group and perform better than the very bottomish cluster that you see up there at the bottom, you know, uh, then this typically means we are in the heavy bear market, heavy recession. And until we see a proper reversal there, you know, the chances are that the bear market persists. And this is just to give you a little bit of a, of a check for how insanely monstrous this energy surge has been ever since the COVID bottom. Because in March 2020, the financial markets bottomed out, including the energy. And ever since, we've been in this massive, massive major breakout, which actually takes us to historical highs, to all-time highs for how expensive the energy is, per this group of stocks at least. We are also talking about once-in-generation situation you don't really see that too often, maybe once or twice in your life, that we are breaking for the interest rates, we're breaking 42 year long downwards trends. 42 years. This doesn't happen every day. It happens every 42 years. So, to address the very topic of the keynote is how do we actually finish 2022 strong. Where does this strength come from? Well, it comes from the point of understanding what trends are and the fact that they tend to persist. And there is a good saying, there is a good saying, good old saying, that was Chinggis Khan maybe, uh, who said, trend is your friend. I'm just, of course, I'm teasing a little bit. I don't know who was the author for it, but the trend is your, is your friend. The follow the trend that don't fight the tape. Don't fight the trend. Don't fight the Fed. Okay, many of those kind of like synonymic versions to it that all have in common something that we know as a momentum principle. And this momentum principle tells you that the trends tend to persist, that the outperforming assets will continue to outperform while the underperforming assets will tend to underperform. And in the light of that, capital preservation has been the dominant trend in 2022. We don't really see big performance and big movers from risk assets like cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, like 
S&P 500, like the most you know, risk asset stocks. Instead, we are talking about this, this recessive period. And here's the chart, real good chart. Have a look real close. It's basically saying that it's an inverse Bitcoin chart. It's showing USD performance when compared with Bitcoin. It's basically saying that if you managed to sell and exit on that 20, January 1st, 2022, you would have stayed 60% in profit against the Bitcoin. It also means conversely that Bitcoin is close to 60% down. So by staying with Bitcoin, you, have lost, you would have lost about 60% of your portfolio value. It doesn't really make too much sense to counter trade such movements. They follow the trend. And this also comes from very distinct strength, technical power of the dollar. And we've noticed in the massive surge recently, of course, within the interest rate hiking cycle, massive breakout. Breakout as the dollar breaks to 20-year highs. Again, 42-year trend breaks, 20-year trends break. Okay? This is not something that I talk about every day. This is something that we can talk about each 20, 40 years. We also have to acknowledge and account for the seasonal trends. And there is a little bit of promising note and the light at the end of a tunnel, if you will, because September on average is the worst performing month for crypto, for Bitcoin, for stocks, period. This is the only negative month on average. This is the only month that returns negative performance, negative returns in Bitcoin's history. Good news is that it's October already. And October history returns on average close to 16% performance as opposed to even more bullish following November closer to 50% average. Those are the historical returns from actual ex exchange of Bitstamp you know, over the 11 last years. This is some serious seasonal trend. And this trend tells you that September through October through November can actually bring some decent chances of reversal because what happens in the past, of course, cannot give you a guarantee of what's going to happen in the future. However, relative frequency of occurrences, which means how many, think, how many times certain phenomena happen, let's say, for October to be bullish or bearish, it directly translates to probability to which you can adjust. This is a measure of risk. And you, you know when the months are good, just maybe you have your better odds of deploying more capital, perhaps switching a little bit of this bearish vibe, you know, perhaps investing just a little bit more when the times are good, when the months are good on average versus when the times and months are bad. So knowing of that, we may well see as some sort of a mean reverting move to the upside somewhere in the area of $25,000, $30,000, somewhere in October, November. I don't know that. Nobody knows that, but just maybe we're going to be there. Then, if it happens, we have a pretty good candidate for major market reversal, as in the bull market start. Now, I have no idea what the future brings. I have no idea even, you know, if I wake up tomorrow or if I come in, you know, off the stage, just, you know, don't slip my foot. I don't know. I'll try not to. But if the things align well, if the interest rates, you know, eventually start coming off, and there is overall a little bit of an ease, which is supposed to come at one point, then just maybe we're going to have a kick off new bull market in 2023. And finally, what gives you strong finish to the year is finding out liars those that tend to perform better than the rest and how we can fight them. And the reason and the answer immediately that follows is crypto breadth. And the breadth is the ratio of bullish to bearish issues, which means how many bullish stocks, securities, issues, cryptos are as opposed to the bearish side. And you can tell this is a good breadth chart for 200 day average. And it tells you on this histogram that only about Four to find uh, four to five percent of cryptos are above their 200 day trends, are in their own bull market, right? And the bull market typically, when it happens, the odds are reversed, and it means that most of the coins are in their own bull market. 
However, here you can see that there is 95% of the coins that are trending down, as opposed to those 5% that are performing better and they're outliers. And we can find those opportunities within a couple of distinct fields, and namely gaming, NFTs, metaverse. Those are not the only categories. However, the opportunities like to be there. And here on the right actually is my own basic, like APE investment. 90-20, and if you ask me, it's been holding as an investment its value pretty well when the entire world and stocks and economy crash. It serves its role pretty well, if you ask me. And speaking of trends and this tendency of trends to persist, this is just a fresh, fresh trend look, outlook for seven days performance, and you can tell that the very leading ones on top are Azuki, then Doodles, then on the third in the middle is actual Ape, Border Hell Club. Uh, slightly below the 0% uh, break-even uh, break threshold. However, those trends and trying to understand where the trends are in terms of the outliers, this helps you find those opportunities, and which takes me to gaming. And for the gaming, there are, of course, many, many of these massive opportunity candidates. Uh, just, just to name a couple, we are talking about ApeCoin, Again, Border Yacht Club, uh, Mana, the Central and uh, the Sandbox, of course. Axie Infinity, which has been mentioned on the previous panel, Steppen. And this all comes from the fact that there is a combination and merge of two huge markets cryptocurrencies and gaming. And they're all coming together. So that the game GameFi users have been actually recording inflow of new users when the entire market crashes, which is pretty interesting. That's why I'm thinking the good opportunities potentially may be within the gaming industry, because when the market crashes, you see an inflow of new users to GameFi. So I know that's a lot to process and digest, so let me give you a wrap. Let me slow down, let me break it down, and put everything together for you. Are you okay with that? Yeah, good. So how we finished 2022 strong then? By accounting for the fact that the trend is your friend. You don't want to find yourself on the wrong side of the trend. And these trends include in 2022 capital preservation and they tend to persist, which means that you have better chances of assigning yourself to capital preservation as long as it lasts because you have better odds than counting against or actually for the reversal of it. Seasonal trends have to be acknowledged. Potentially better October, November is what gives a little bit of a light at the end of a tunnel, like I said. And the opportunity is fine within the outliers. Those are the three last minute seasonal aspects, important aspects, including seasonality, that I think that I would like to leave you with. But before I finish off, I wanted to give you a very good quote and a food for thought from my favorite investor, from Warren Buffett. And one time he said, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you will earn. So invest in your knowledge, go invest in your books, invest in your education, and invest in yourself. Thank you.